Hello everybody, welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube, Pitstain Hobbies. Uh, I'm your co-pilot Ian here, and we're back on the Agora Models Mitsubishi A6M0 fighter build. We've got pack 7 here. Um, this is a very cool build. I've actually influenced one of uh, my Discord buddies. Uh, he, he ordered the kit. He's, he's doing it too. So, <laughs> hopefully mine works at the end. No, it will. Um, either way, go down to the link below and uh, check out Agora Models. Uh, go click on that. Uh, it's a really cool model. Like, you know, especially if you're into like military aviation models, this thing is pretty sick. Um, but we're going to get started with pack seven here. Ooh, big parts. Look at that. That's the whole back spine of the fuselage right there. That's badass. Uh, stage 54 is the first one in the pack. We have another adorable little cute itsy bitsy hello little baby servo. You're so adorable. Aww. Um, all these servos do have specific numbers on the plugs. This one's H2. The one from stage 52 uh, is H3. I just took it out because I don't know if I need it uh, for this pack. Um, we have our servo test board from uh, stage 53. So that's a cool little thing. And our testing battery pack doohickey. We will need that. There's 54. And oh, this. Oh, yeah. We've got a piece of the base here. It's. Uh, Feels like some nice, solid uh, IKEA MDF type stuff. So there we are. Let's just put you aside. You know, I just cleaned off my side workbench and it's all covered in crap again. I got the rest of the thing clean though. At least you can see stainless steel again. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking on with this thing. Uh, I'm gonna connect this and this and this servo and I'll be right back to go through the test procedure with you. Uh, this is gonna be a test and calibration to align the servo horn uh, for proper orientation when it goes into the model. Be right back. Alrighty, we're all plugged in, uh, ready for testing. Um, they do have in the instructions that there is a harness in stage 59 that you may need to use. Uh, I guess depending on the revision of the circuit board, um, which basically looks like it switches the... Which way is this? It just, it just swaps the positive and negative to the servo, basically. I think maybe China got the circuit board backwards uh, back in the day. But either way, we have her all hooked up the way we're supposed to go. And just, just to try to like reiterate how tiny this servo is, this is a standard size, basic ass, you know, standard, standard, like run-of-the-mill RC car servo. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's not a Futaba. I, I would... I have a Futaba somewhere. I just didn't have, you know, wasn't handy. But like, this is a very basic, you know, throttle brake steering type, you know, whatever, servo for an RC car, 110 scale. And this is a 118 scale plane. And this is the servo. It's so tiny. It's so absolutely microscopic. But what we're going to do is now that we've got this plugged into the power and we've got the servo plugged into the board, as per the instructions, we're going to flip the power on and we now have a red light here. We're going to hit this first button and center the servo, which I've already done so it didn't move. Um, we're then going to take this itty bitty servo horn, this little guy, ah, come on Ian. There we go, that's a beauty shot. I've got to clean my fingernails. Um, and put it on the servo as close to straight back as we can. So there's teeth on that little nub that comes out of the servo horn. It is like a, a geared thing. And then we're gonna hit this little second button here. Okay, and that's what it should do. That's perfect. And we're gonna stop that. And then we're gonna hit the first button again and recenter it. And this is where we need to keep it. So then we're going to turn off our servo, okay? And you could manually rotate this thing, but when you go to assemble it, just make sure you keep it like this or wherever the instructions tell us to orient it because now the whole thing knows where the servo is centered. Um, and, and that's really it for the, uh, the servo testing phase of this, uh, of this stage. So uh, that's stage 54 done. It's very important. Also, just a PSA. Okay, let me, you know what? Let me do this. Let me take out this little plug. Let me unplug this from the power brick. Now, I didn't have this problem, uh, but I have heard once or twice about 
various part works, having problems with circuit boards. And I just want to address that. And it can happen with any part work. And uh, this is sort of like, I guess, like a safety box, just so you don't short things, short circuits. Um, you can see there's a bunch of little contacts on the back of here. And you see how it's one, two, one, two. That one's a little close. Those are really close. Um, it's very easy sometimes for there to be a manufacturing defect on a circuit board. And if something's not working right and you turn it on and something doesn't happen, turn it off right away. Look at the back of your circuit boards and these through connectors will have little solder blobs on them to connect them to multiple layers of the circuit boards. You want to make sure they're all separate blobs, you know, individual blobs. If they're ever touching, like if you're testing something that's not working, but you look at the circuit board and these blobs ever touch together, these are really close and kind of hard to see, but they just don't touch. These don't touch. Those don't touch. Those don't touch. But they're very close. Put on your little, uh, put on your little magnifiers like an old man like I do and just look at it. And if you see blobs touching on the circuit board, if you have the skill to desolder and resolder or remove solder or whatever, um, you can do so and maybe just save yourself the time of contacting customer service for a replacement circuit board. Uh, I actually had this happen on, um, on my Fan Home Enterprise uh, and it was a simple fix. I just had to take a little solder out. Um, there was a blob that was touching. Sometimes it's as simple as just snipping off some excess with your nippers. But just keep that in mind um, that, you know, it, it can happen with any of these because they're built in mass production at a factory in China. You know, the part work company doesn't own the factory. Uh, they ask for what they ask for and they get what they get, um, but not always what they want, <laughs> so to speak. But this one was fine. We just, you just keep in mind. So, you know, if you ever have a problem with either this or any other part work model, just be like, hey, I got a, I got a bad circuit board, you know. And they'll, they'll replace the part unless you bought it, you know, on eBay or something. Um, but, yeah, that's really cool. These little baby servos really – I've never worked with a servo this small. I've been in RC cars for, you know, something like, I don't know, 30 years at this point almost. Uh, well, if you count my childhood of having, like, Tyco electric RC cars, I have been in RC cars for well over 35 years. Um, but, yeah, this is, this is the tiniest servo I think I've ever seen that I've held in my hand. Uh, you know, I have like a Robeson Optimus Prime self-transforming, and it's probably got, you know, several things going on this tiny. Either way, I've spent enough time expunging on that, uh, over five minutes of it. And these zero videos are going to be a little long. Uh, stage 55, installing the gearbox for the tail gear. Oh, look at this. We get to break out that big honking piece of metal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at this. Mer. This is a, a big son of a. There we go. Rip you open a bit. Brute force you out of the bag now. We're just and make sure we get our screws. And we should have two bags of screws, O1s and O2s. And I'm gonna label those on the bag with my black Sharpie marker, like I always do for this build, since um, the screws are not labeled. Um, and then let's take this thing. Oh my gosh. This is a big stinking plate of metal. I forgot I was zoomed in so far. Dear God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know who you're watching. The dumbest modeling channel on YouTube. Um, yeah, okay. Hey, if you're interested, oh, look at this. I just got a new Japanese PH0 vessel screwdriver made in JA Pan. Okay. Oh, precision. Hi. Oh, yes. Very good screwdriver. Japanese screwdriver. Japanese model. Well, I mean, it's made in China probably, but it's a zero, so it's a Japanese fighter. So I just have this out for, uh, for fun, comedic, and cultural effect of me using a Japanese screwdriver. That being said, we got this massive thing out, and what do I do with it? Okay, I got to uh, go get some tail gear that we built in a previous stage, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to install the tail wheel section now that we built before. And we're going to go right here, and we're just going to pop her right into those two little openings. And we're going to use two of the 55-2 screws, which are the coarse threaded screws for plastic. And I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And there was a little mystery I had to solve. And it was why I had the stage, um, the stage 52 servo motor still floating around. is because there seemed to be a page missing from uh, the PDF instructions. And I checked the download page 
to like just now. It's still missing. So I'm going to email Agora. They'll probably fix that very quickly, get those instructions. But that Stage 52 servo goes in here with two of the shorter screws that come with that servo. And I put the horn on it just for now, just like, just keep it, have it there so I know the center alignment point. Um, but we're now going to take our Stage 54 servo because I started drawing numbers on them. I'm like, oh, I'm saving these servos for a while. Turns out we should have installed this back in pack six. Um, because I, I did watch Wayne's video and he did that, but he didn't mention, uh, you know, it may be being omitted from the servo. So this really only goes in one spot right there. Um, and we're going to just slot that in there. And then we're going to slot this whole assembly into the back of the center tail spar, whatever you want to call it. And everything has a little hole it falls into. And we're going to use... One, two, three, only these top three screws, not these two. And we're going to put 5502 screws, um, which are the, 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 the eh, I guess the, the, the plastic, the coarser threaded ones. We can get three screws in these three holes right here and I'll be right back. Okay. And she's all screwed in now. Looking good. All right. You see that servo is sandwiched in there. We have a servo sandwich. Very nice. Let me just put you out there. All right, and now we're going to cut in a pack 56. Nothing in there. All right. We've got a few big plastic plates, and we got this cool thing. This this cool, uh, like, it's almost like an old, super old PS2 keyboard port from, like, you know, the 80s and 90s. Um, but, yeah, we got this thing. This is going to go into the base. This is what's going to power the uh the whole airplane we got a couple plates here and we got this other retainer which clearly goes you know like something like that at some point um to hold this ball in place because this little sucker needs to kind of like wiggle around in here a bit while the plane's doing its maneuvers on its base which is very cool and then you have um a numerous bag of screws a bag of numerous screws and then a less numerous bag of screws these are 5506 and 5507. Uh, I'm going to get those sharpied up. But basically what we need to do is take this plate and we need to have the tail in this orientation. And we're going to take it like this and put it in the back and put five of those uh, flanged screws in there. And I will be right back. Okay, so that plate is screwed in. Lots of screws, five screws for that little guy. Uh, this looks like another servo is going to go in here and possibly, yep, another motor in there probably. There is a lot of motors and servos in this, in the, the tail boom of this, uh, this fighter. This is, this is pretty crazy actually. This is, <laughs> it's pretty cool. How much is going on in this thing? We're going to take this part now and put it in this orientation and take this plastic plate and she should snap right in uh, into these five holes. And we're going to put three screws right here, here, and here. Not these yet. Um, fix the frame with... Yeah, yeah. So just these three for now. I'll be right back. With the big flange screws, of course. All right, that's in like that. We got these two pins here, the two pegs. Um, we're going to take this plastic part put that right there and then two more of these flange screws the same size the 5607 well there's only one flange screw size in this parts bag um and uh, you know toy ish uh not not mega toy don't want to strip any plastic but once it's in and it stops give it a tiny turn that's it but any further you know you oh, it's like any plastic you risk stripping it so don't do that no bad don't do that eh, eh, eh. don't over tighten your plastic screws okay and now we're going to install the uh, power ball socket and this is going to go these wires are supposed to go through here ah, come on through here and this little ball sits in there now, this really makes me want to add, this is asking for schmoo. So I'm going to take some of my silicone grease. And I'm just, if I really wanted to be crazy, 
I would actually, there's a tiny bit of a seam line there. And I would, you know, I'm going to knock that back real quick. Give me one sec. I just want it to be extra smooth and buttery. Okay. So what I did is I took a glass nanofile. You don't have to use like a gun primer racer like I do. You can get a cheap glass nanofile on Amazon. Just search it. I, if I'll put it in my Amazon store if I can find one that I've ordered. I, I'm sure I have. Um, but yeah, cheap. And I just wanted to sand off that that little uh, casting seam. It, you're not, it's, this is really, you're not going to see this when it's done. You don't have to do this. This is me being extremely OCD. And then I'm going to take a tiny squirt of silicone grease and just just smear a little bit of that schmoo in there. There we go. That's not going to hurt the plastic. And honestly, if it hurts the silver paint in this one section alone, I really don't care. It, you're not going to see it. And we put that in there. Ooh. Oh, that is one smooth ball spin. Oh, yeah. I love. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love smooth articulation. I'm better with the mechanical stuff than the modeling stuff, actually. Like, I build real models and I paint them and do all this stuff, but I really enjoy and I'm much better at building mechanical thingamajobs. We're going to take this plate and um, it's going to go this way. And we're going to put it over these two posts here. And honestly, I'm going <laughs> to... A little more. I'm going to put a little schmoo in this side as well. Just a little. A little dab will do you. You don't need a ton. And just spread it around. It'll spread around on its own as the ball articulates around in that socket. I love balls and sockets. Don't you? Nothing, nothing satisfies you more than a good ball and socket joint. And then we're going to take uh, a couple of these little uh, non-shouldered screws and uh, put it in these two holes and get that secured. Don't over tighten things, people. You know, you, you crank on your wang jangle too hard and uh, you're, you're going to go to the doctor um, or have to get out crazy glue. And I'm going to put these screws in and not screw it up while I'm off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, and our electro ball is, is secured into its, its, its resting place. And yeah, that, that's good. It, ooh, it almost, come, no, not quite. I actually might want to tighten this a tiny bit more. I was saying don't over tighten. I'm not over tightening. I just want to make sure it's tight enough. You don't want your ball flying out of where it's supposed to be. I mean, that's just horrible, especially if it happens in public. I got a ticket for that once. Um, a little bit different story for a different type of YouTube channel. Okay, so there we go. Okay, our little ball is nice and floppy and smooth and easy to move. Yet. Yeah, it doesn't come out. Close to it, but not quite. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Moving on from my embarrassing, I really, that didn't happen in real life. I'm making it up, people. I'm a silly, silly boy. Okay, stage 57 time. Let's get out. Ow! I just backed into one of my toolbox drawers. Uh, always close your toolbox drawers. That's 58. There's 57. Okay, here we go. What do we got here? Fun stuff. Got another little motor and some bracketry and some screws and a little gear. This is now one, two servos and one motor in the back. And there's going to be another servo and another motor. So we're going to have a total of three servos and two motors that I can tell so far just in the tail section of this plane just to work the, um, hold on. I've got my, I've got my cheat sheet. Uh, 19 and 17, uh, yeah, uh, elevators and the rudder, um, and of course the, uh, tail gear. I don't think we have a working tail hook on this. We don't have an arrestor hook. Do we have an arrestor hook for this thing? I don't know. It is a carrier fighter. I wonder if they put an arrestor hook on. I won't be disappointed if they don't. It doesn't really need it. But, uh, either way, uh, let's, uh, stop flapping your lips, you jackass, and just build the model. People just want to see that. I don't know how many people are here just to listen to me talk in the background of whatever they're doing and not actually paying full attention because they don't care. I'm just background noise. I'm happy to be background noise. It's fun. I guess it's kind of like putting on a, some stupid talk show uh, on the TV while you're working on something unrelated just to have some uh, some white noise in place. But uh, there we are with that. Let's get all those parts out. We're going to throw the little gear on the little motor. Do that. 
you know, there's no centering of these motors required really because um, servos have a limit to one, one direction to the other. Whereas the electric motor will just constantly spin in either direction depending on the polarity of the voltage applied to it. Um, oh, I just got technical. Oh, kind of turned myself on a little there almost. That was, hmm, <laughs> sexy. Okay, and we're going to, like I thought, we are going to have the, uh, the fuselage tail section spar oriented this way. And we're going to shove that. Oh, you, you're a tight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, listen to me. You're going in your hole. Okay, and she goes in her hole. And then a couple of 5705 screws, which I think that's all we get in this is a bunch of 5705 screws. So uh, let me just uh, run real quick so I don't, God forbid, I don't write the damn stage number on the screw bag. I will screw up. Um, yeah, it's fun. How's everybody's holiday? <laughs> How's the weather where you are? Whatever. <laughs> These seem way too big. These seem entirely too large. Hold on. Uh, wait. <laughs> How many? 5705, 57. Oh, wait a second. Holy crap. These, these are entirely too large, these screws. Um, it's actually, oh, see, this is one thing that, this is a tricky one. They put two different size screws in the same bag. Um, which will confuse people like me, uh, handily, apparently. Um, yeah, we want the little, the little, the littler screws, not the bigger screws. So let me, dear God, Ian, see, you know, I said about screwing up and what did I do? Um, hey, you got to see it on camera at least that I'm a total, total bonehead. Uh, my God. Oh, if I was British, I could say much better curse words, and I don't think YouTube would, like, get angry about it. Why do the British get to say all the good cuss words without getting censored? And then us Americans, we say our, our very barbarish, basic, universally known curse words, and it's like, no, no, you can't do that. But, man, you know, the British can say some things when you screw. You guys are so lucky, and gals, so lucky. The words you get to say when you screw stuff up, like, oh my God, are you blessed? Just please remember how lucky you are. That stage is complete, by the way. And, um, and then we got to do a uh, aileron servo motor and test that. So it's going to be the same deal uh, with 58. Let me grab that real quick. Oh, I love having this wireless mic. I can just kind of roll around wherever I want. Here's 58, another one of these. Oh my God, it's so cute, little baby servo. Um, all the servos are the same, but again, yep, H1. The other two servos said, ah, can you even see that? Yeah, there it is, H1. The other two servos had H2 and H3. So you got to make sure the right servo is in the right place, which is why I was drawing the stage number on them with a Sharpie. Um, which I'm still going to do, um, just for the hell of it. Uh, this is 58. That's a great 5 Ian. Oh, my. Whatever. Um, I know it's 58. It's okay. <laughs> I can read my own handwriting, at least. Otherwise, I would have not made it this far in life. And we got to do the same centering procedure with a little test board and probably this little reversing harness um, because I, it's just a, a thing because the testing board's they're not meant to use for the full model. They're just there for testing things. And uh, so this harness, I believe, is just used for testing the servos, doing the little routine. Um, but we're not going to go through that again. It's the same exact procedure. So uh, I will be right back. And uh, this servo, where does it go? What does it do? Where do you go? Oh, there it is. Okay, I see. BRB. All right, well, our servo is tested and centered, and we're going to put it in its little home here. We're going to go on this side. We're going to shove it in there. Carefuling. There we go. And then uh, in this bag, there are two smaller screws and three larger screws. We're going to use two of the larger screws because they try to always give you a spare. And we're going to put those little suckers in with our Japanese vessel screwdriver. If this was German, it would be uh, Wessel. <laughs> no, if it was Russian, if it was Chekhov from Star Trek, Wessel. Wessel. 
Oh, God, it was so funny. They really played it up in the uh, newer Star Trek movie with uh, one of the Chris's, uh, Pine, right? Pine, a poor Chekhov. He, he did lose his life to a uh, automotive accident, I believe. Um, his, like, Jeep Grand Cherokee's uh, push-button parking automatic... I don't trust those things ever. Transmission came out of park and, and rolled over him and his... Oh, God, that was horrible. Oh, almost oh, almost as horrible as how fat I'm getting. Uh, well, no, more horrible. That's definitely a tragedy. Uh, and then we're going to put our servo horn on, and we want it to face straight down. So we're going to put her on there and try to get her as vertically straight down as possible. The teeth on the servo horn are never ever where you want them exactly. Um, but that's, that should be good enough. Okay. Should be uh, close enough for government work. And then we're going to want to take one of the tinier screws to, uh, hold that servo horn down. Eh, come on. Zip, Ziploc bags vex me. They really do. Where's the, which, eh, I'll just pour everything out. Here we go. It's the smaller screw there. Okay, so I'm going to put the bigger screw back in. And this little, this little metal tie rod, we're going to shove that back in there. Those little linkage rods. Don't want to lose those. And, uh, yeah, this little screw, we're probably going to need the... Ah! Look at this. It's like threading a needle sometimes with these PH0 screws. But having this beautiful vessel screwdriver, uh, link in my Amazon store below. And this is a plastic shaft... Uh, servo, it's, um, most servos have a plastic shaft, unless you get the metal gear, metal gear. Those are a little beefier, but it's not necessary for something this tiny. And we're done. Is that it? Okay. I didn't miss anything. Okay. Um, now we're going to do the, uh, <clears throat> testing the elevator servo motor and elevator right assembly. Interesting. Okay. Complicated bits here a little bit. Eh, not too bad. We can do it. If I can do it, <laughs> pretty much anybody should be able to do this, you know, unless you're my younger brother. My younger brother couldn't build this, but also my younger brother can't change a light bulb. No offense, Alan, if you're watching, but there's a reason I'm so bossy. Okay, look at that. I actually pulled the staples for a change to get the parts out of a pack because I was like, it was not quite certain and i do have a slight cut in this bag because i took <clears throat> this little extension harness uh for the testing the servos out of stage 59 earlier and i tried to not compromise the bag as much as i could and we've got a bunch of plastic plates here we've got this little elevator dude dad that's clearly going to be a ca glue job at some point during the build okay oh well, a little ball bearing and a little shaft always fun some little things there. Oh, look at this itty bitty little thing. I don't know what the hell. Oh, that goes right here. Oh, double flappy action. Extra cool. All right. Paint, very nice, as on all the other parts. Did I get my, what? What's all this white crap on my desk? I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, foreign object removal. Proceed. No. Um, oh, okay. There are those two little thingies in that bag, because I'm like looking at the instructions, I'm like, where are those things? Uh, 5912, yeah, they added that, that little harness in after. It looks like an addendum photo on the instructions. Clearly because, I guess, when they were making the testing circuit board in China, they, they reversed the polarity uh, for the positive and negative power to the servo, or something got reversed. I, I, I could decipher, I don't know, not much. Um, turn the... Oh, oh, it was the control. You positive and negative shouldn't matter. It was the control lead was in the wrong pin. That's all. Uh, but that's why they have these little this little adapter harness, I guess, to make. It's cheaper to make this harness than to make a whole new testing board. And uh, all that PCB is, that's way more money than doing this. And Agora did not design this model originally. This was done years and years ago by who knows who back in the day. I think it was Elagor was the manufacturer. Um, and the original designer was some like Italian company, I think. Uh, so, wait, 
Oh, oh, they just caught us up. I said, you know what I said? They didn't tell you to put this servo in back for 52. The instructions are in um, stage 59. They go over putting, testing and putting in this servo uh, into, this, into this assembly. So that's why. I guess I, I don't know. I, maybe I didn't pay attention to the World of Aiden videos or something. Um, but yeah, that's that. Okay, so we've got to take this and get these two itty-bitty little plates mounted in here and get this cover plate screwed on. And I'm going to get that done right quick, and I will show you the results, and it's going to be very self-explanatory. It's just going to be like all the other things like this we've done with these little things with the tooth in the hole. Okay, be right back. All righty, so we're going to get this. Ah, 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 come on. <sighs> Ah, of course it's not magnetic. Hold on, I gotta get this little, this little tiny itty bitty metal rod, and we've got our two little guys trapped in there. And we're gonna put this through the two holes. Come on, there we go. And then we're gonna put the gray bottom part right on that rod and get it slotted right in there. This is where there's a little gymnastics involved. We got to take this little baby flap. It's like a little trim flap thing, I think. Nope. Green side up. Definitely green side up. Okay. And we've got to uh, rest it all. Okay. We need like a raised surface. I'll be right back. Okay. So I've got a box of erasers. Uh, erasers, these things are actually good for uh, cleaning out your sanding sticks and sandpaper. Uh, surprisingly, if you want to reuse stuff like that, it's good for that. But if we just rest the part on there, we can then rest everything comfortably in its little home. Doesn't that make things easier? Just, just find something because this, this, this vertical plate here doesn't want to let this part sit flat on the work surface. So we're going to put that there and put our little green guy there. We're going to take our little itty bitty ball bearing. That is so cool little that's nice that's a nice touch i mean the fact they didn't need to use a ball bearing they could have used like a like a nylon bushing or something but they went and put a ball bearing in there that's impressive and uh da, 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 da. if the fit is loose glue the top and bottom with a small amount of super glue uh loose or not i'm gonna put a little super glue on the little pegs at the very least, I'm going to get a little on there. Just my super glue is a little thick because it's old. It's stringing. It's so old. Just in those four peg holes, just a little bit. Be very careful with the super glue. Like you really, you really don't want to overdo it. Um, and then, oh, for fudge, fudge sickles. Okay, there we go. We're going to, we're going to snap her together. And that's what you should have when you're done. This should move freely. Yeah, see? Yeah, it needs a little, yeah, this needs a little clamping. See, it doesn't want to stay down. Uh, so I'm going to clamp this and let it dry and I'll be right back. Okay, well, uh, she's been clamped together for a few minutes. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh, no. No, I, maybe I didn't put enough... Did I not put enough glue? Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little CA glue r right in there and clamp her again. Uh, I just want this thing to be properly... Yeah, because that should be fairly firm. Let me sneak a little glue in there. Oh, man, I need to just open a new bottle of glue. This is... There we go. There we are. All right. Well, 59, <laughs> 59 is done. Um, that's just drying, and we got 60 here, uh, which we're going to go over. Let's see who we got here. Ah. Uh... Ooh, that's a whole lot of parts. All right. We've got the 
uh, the, the rudder. Yes, the rudder. Rudder, same thing on a ship or an airplane. We got, we got this rear rudder. This paint finish is really nice, by the way. Uh, so nice that I managed to scratch mine. You son of a... I, I don't call it damage. I call it weathering. <laughs> it wasn't like that when it came out of the bag. But lo and behold, after these big, 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 big sausage figures, uh, what do you call it? Keep, keep your, keep your uh, D-beaters off my tools. Yeah, these things, these cause all sorts of trouble. Ooh, look, there's a little light. Ooh, ooh I love... Oh, that is a cool LED. Look at that. It's a flat top, like uh, almost like a lighthouse LED. Very, very flat. That's cool. All right. That'll be fun. That's a staple. You don't need that. Throw that in the garbage uh, or get feed it to the cat. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, and then yeah, we've got those little, those little brackety things and a little thing, which are very common with any of our control surfaces. And I can imagine how that all goes. And uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to start off on... Okay. Yeah, we'll be right back. I'm going to show you the first stage of uh, assembling the rudder. All right, be right back. All righty, so stage 60. Uh, it is the next day. I had to wait 45 damn minutes in line in Atlanta to get a bagel. It's like Taylor Swift was signing them or something. Anytime a new bagel shop opens anywhere in Georgia, it's like massive crowds because so many people from like New York and New Jersey moved down here. Or if they've been to New York and New Jersey and they've had a real bagel and it's like, it was pandemonium. I don't know. I have pl plenty of advice for them how to improve their operations and incre increase their output and efficiency. But what do I know? I only grew up across the street from a bagel shop for 30 years. Ugh, Georgia. Georgia. I love living here, but damn. Trying to get a bagel. Oh, man. Oh, pain in the butt. So we're putting these little, these little, you know, these, these, we're used to these by now. Putting a couple of these in this little silver bit. For the rudder, and it wants us to uh, put this thing in, put the little rod through them as usual. You can see very clearly in the instructions. Um, it's it's straightforward. It's a little fiddly because we're not able to clamp these down as of yet. We're, oh God. Okay, we're just gonna like put them, put the rod in place. Sorry. Um, yeah, let me just, there we go. If we get the rod in place and we get the little guys aligned properly, and then, here, let me, let me zoom in and show you what this is going to look like if I was actually in frame, but here, there we go. The two little metal sticks are in there and little rods in its little home there. Okay. Then we're going to take this, this weird thing, and we're going to put this over this that'll clamp down the little metal tabs into the silver part and then a couple of these little flange screws out of this bag and I'll be right back they're gonna go here and here BRB Oh, once again, my eyes and my brain didn't agree and it wasn't the flangey screws uh, you know I'm looking at the PDF the CAD drawings it's, it's, uh, you know, ah, I guess it is the little screws in the picture. I just, I just have a little trouble looking at them, but that's what you want to end up with basically. Nice and simple. And then I'm assuming we're going to, okay, we got to smush on this little, we got another little thing here, a little, uh, kind of like a, like, like a trim flap, I guess it would, you know, it's like very, it's a tiny little piece of a rudder, just like with the, um, ailerons or I think whatever <laughs> the tail flappy things. Hold on, I could I could use the right word. Stop being lazy. Seventeen, yeah, elevators. There, jeez, I wasn't right with either of them. Well, except for the tail flappy thing, that was right. Ish. We're gonna put that in little grooves there. <clears throat> then we're gonna glue down uh, the other side on top, only on the post holes. Okay, I broke out some new, super new-ish super glue, because uh, that other one was just getting too hard to squeeze. And, uh, you know, it's winter, it's cold. I have, like, cold allergies. Literally, there's a medical term for it. You could Google it. Um, and it, it just, it's like it causes arthritis, almost, of cold. I just want to get a little in each hole. A little more in these bottom holes. There we go. Just don't fill the entire hole, like, 
I actually did a couple on a couple of these. All right, all right, Ian. Well, if it, there's there's constants in this world, death taxes and Ian screwing up, um, and we got a. It's a snappy, snappy fit. Ah, oh, I lost my rudder. Oh, this is what I get for doing things live on camera. Flathead, flathead screwdriver. Emergency, Will Robinson. Let's pry back apart. Super glue hasn't said yet. We're okay. We're okay. No need to panic. I'll be right back. All right. Well, much cursing later. Oh, all my fault because I wasn't paying attention. Be very, very attentive to make sure both the rod stays in its channel and this stays in its channel when you're gluing things um, or else you will uh, <laughs> end up in the same place I did. But with enough enough cursing and clamping, because it already started glued, gluing itself together. If, if I didn't have any glue on it, it would have been just just peachy. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that was my screw up. Totally on me. Let me, let me clean some of my, my man grease off of here. My bagel juices. It was a decent bagel, but it was only a 7 out of 10, that bagel. It wasn't worth 45 minutes. Ah, maybe it was worth 45 minutes. I don't know. I guess it was worth 45 minutes. You know, being a New Yorker in Atlanta, trying to get a bagel, it's not easy. We're going to take out our little, uh, no one cares about your personal life, Ian. No one gives a crap. Uh, we're going to take this little doohickey with a D-shaped hole, and it is going to go onto the D-shaped shaft at the bottom here. And it is a nice, tight press fit. Um, so... No need for glue. So that's how it's going to get actuated by a little rod. That was, hey, that was almost a burp, <laughs> mostly a hiccup. Take this other little side here, and what we're going to do is get our LED. There we go. Well, come on, Ian. Give them some detail. There we go. We're going to get our little LED in its channel and bend it down to clear like so, and then we've got to, and then, and then we've got to smush, smush these together, there we go, and we'll do some more bending of it, we've got to get a couple little itty bitty screws in here, right? Yeah, a couple little tiny screws go in this, these two holes here, so I'll be right back with that done. Okay, one small Tourette's outburst later, and here we go. Uh, you want the wires to kind of cross back over under here, and then keep them on this side, like somewhere out here. And then we're going to throw this into its little holes, and it's going to line up right there. Oh, wow, okay. That's all very snug in there. And then a couple of those, uh, couple of those flange screws in these two holes here and here, and I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, okay. We're gonna take our metal rod from stage 60 and put it into that little, uh, that little thing at the bottom of the uh, rudder before, right up in that hole. And you got to put this in first like this, and then lay it down. Okay. Then we're gonna take our servo horn. and get it hooked in to that rod and then get it on the servo pointing directly to the side of the airframe um let's use a little little thing to use something to push it on there since my fingies don't fit in there and uh the rod is retained by this plastic plate in this plastic area here, so it can't come out. Uh, it, normally, you'd have like a Z-bend um, on each end of a servo, um, you know, rod, like connecting rod, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but in this case, they're, they're captured, so that's fine. I'm going to take one of our little screws from stage 54. Um, that servo horn was from stage 54 as well. And we got to get a little screw to hold this little servo horn on. Man, these things are small screws. Arr. See, it's the curse of screwing on camera. I was never meant to screw on camera. There we go. Okay. Well, I'm going to finish screwing that in, and then uh, we'll get to the next part of this. Be right back. 
Okay, and it's in. There we go. Um, so if you manipulate the servo manually, which which really shouldn't hurt it, um, you can. Wait, what the heck? Oh, I just popped my rod out. Oh, be careful with that. There we go. So that's nice, centered. Okay, I like, I like. And yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much done with this pack. There's a little bit to do on the assembly base. Um, might as well just break it out and show you. You get from now on, we're going to be getting bits and bits and pieces of the. Ooh, hello. Uh, there we go. We're going to get bits and pieces of the base as we uh, carry on with the build. Carry on. That's a very World of Wayne thing to say. Carry on. There we go. Stay calm. Yes, I know, I know. Those posters are everywhere in the U.S. I'm sure any anybody from the U.K. that travels to the U.S. and goes into any of our, like, Home Goods or TJ Maxx stores, it's just like, oh, really, Americans? Yeah, I know. It's a thing. I, I prefer some of the joke versions of the Be Calm and Carry On sign, though. You know, um... <laughs> You know, panic buy and hide. Screw calm, go crazy. Um, there we go. And uh, we got some screws here. And uh, here we go. Our first piece of IKEA furniture is right here. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fairly nice fairly nice finish on it. Yeah, it's like a like an MDF type particle board thing. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. We've got some electronicals here. Let's see what we have. These are our limit switches. We got a little bracket with holes and a couple of these fellas. I like to always take a gander at the back of my circuit boards just to make sure everything looks kosher. And it does and Little clickies. There you go. I have to just hold it right up to the mic, I guess. Um, oh boy. Seriously, you, you, the guy in the factory in China tying all these wires into little knots. I don't like you. <laughs> and you probably don't like your job. Uh, I always have to straighten everything. It's just, it's not going to happen. Okay. I'll have to let the OCD slide for now. Uh, we're just going to plop these down. Okay, so... This one is going to plug into this one, like so. And then, and then, then we're just going to bolt them down to this little plastic board with four screws, just like that. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, and we're all done. Uh, there's actually two sizes of little little tapered head screws. You want the larger ones to hold these in because I accidentally used the smaller ones and I was like, oh, these seem to be stripping out almost super easy. And then no, use the larger taper screws and then just the two big fat screws in here. Don't worry about cranking them down too hard because as the box goes together, we're probably going to need to loosen these to just align things perfectly and uh, label all your screws. And we have some parts left over here at the end. Let's see if we need them. And no. Um, and they did give us, oh, they gave us some extra little screws in case this motor's loose. Mine's super snug in there, so I don't, I didn't need to replace screws, but they give you some replacement screws. Um, 6107, the, the, the littler uh, taper screws, but mine, mine, mine seems fine. I don't have an issue. Uh, but if you need them, you need them, I guess. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what happened to my scrolling abilities? Oh, yeah, we're done. That's it. That's the end of pack seven. Awesome. Thank you for watching and listening to me rant. Uh, I was probably a little more surly than usual. Uh, it's been a stressful week. But either way, click on the links below. Go to Agora Models. Uh, go to the Amazon store. Order some crap to cover your desk like I bought. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, comment, email me if you want stickers. I got piles and piles of stickers. And uh, either way, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Ian signing off. Adios, everybody.